Hello and welcome to Open Line. I'm Starlene Stringer. Well, the Irving Parks and Recreation Department has been through a lot of changes during this past year. I mean, the pandemic though, it has not slowed them down. There have been remodels, new projects, and plans for future events too. Our special guests today are Joe Moses, Irving Parks and Recreation Director, and Amy Kincaid, Irving Parks and Recreation Interim Assistant Director. They're gonna bring us up to date on several projects projects and initiatives that keep the department on the leading edge of parks and recreation across the state. Thank you all both for being here. Thank you for having us. Well, it is my pleasure. We have a lot to talk about, so let's just get right to it. And let's start with the Levy project, the uh, Levy Event Plaza in particular. What's the current status on that? And how will the new event center really be beneficial to the city, Joe? You know, we're pretty much complete with Levy. We're out there doing some punch list items. Um, but we're really excited about this project. It's going to bring open space out to that community, which is very much needed, you know, it's dense population out there. But it's going to be an event venue that's going to provide a lot of entertainment for our Irving residents and actually a regional draw. So we're really excited about that and, and all the possibilities of events out there. Gonna create a lot of synergy in that section of town. Um, that's just gonna be a, a hot spot for anybody in the Metroplex. It looks like it for sure. We saw some video as you were talking about it, the ribbon cutting ceremony. Very exciting, I'm sure, for you. Yes, we were great. I mean, this is a project that we thought about for a number of years. Uh, we really didn't think it was possible to be able to acquire the land out there on the lake, um, but our TIF board was, was able to do that. They saw the vision and bought into it, and we were able to acquire that land and create this event venue. So now we have a, a fixed location where we'll be having events in the northern sector of town, um, which is awesome. It definitely sounds awesome. And I know a lot of people are looking forward to using it. So Amy, I want to come to you for the next question because with such a large space and such possibilities, I mean, versatile possibilities, in fact, I assume there are plans for a lot of great events and there may be some in the future that y'all don't even know about yet, but then there are others that you already do know about. So can you give us some inside information? Absolutely. We're looking at kicking off our first large event for 4th of July, which is one of our largest events that we have here in the community. Um, so we're excited about that and just seeing uh, the completion of the project and the people that normally come out just to enjoy that uh, space now. Uh, we are looking at adding some signature events uh, that we are looking to make some changes and just bring new and different to meet the culture of that location as well as the residents. So we're just excited to expand what we're able to offer and just we couldn't be more excited about the opportunity of expanding our events and doing some specific things that we're the only ones that are gonna produce. Sounds very exciting. And Joe, I've gotta ask you, what um, event are you really looking forward to hosting at the Levy Event Plaza? You know what, I'm, I'm partial to the 4th of July. I think we have a great turnout. We usually average about 8,000 people out at that event. Um, I, on site and on the, the rooftops out there and people in their apartments and on the uh, promenade around the lake. It's just a fantastic event, uh, great entertainment, you know, just a great vibe out there for the entire family. Now that we have the plaza, there's, it, it just opens up so many possibilities of things we can do at that venue, in that event, that we're really excited about it. I'm really looking forward to getting back together out there. I think a lot of people are looking forward to just getting out and being able to be around others and having a great time. Now, I think we're also excited for the development of Heritage Park, and it seems like it's going to be setting the tone to downtown Irving when it's completed. So how's that project coming along and what can we expect to see at the new park? Heritage Park is really exciting right now. Um, when you ride by there now, you can actually see things starting to shape up. Uh, there's a... Um, the, the brand new gazebo that we're going to be having out there, the, we're re, um, redoing the caboose out there, restoring that. Uh, there's just a lot of great venues. It's going to be a central hub for the downtown location. I think it's, again, similar to Levy, it'll be where we concentrate all of our events and activities on the southern sector of town, but it has a more homey feel. Um, we're going to have a built-in stage out there, permanent stage fixture out there with a large LED screen that's gonna allow for a variety of different types of programming out there, something unique that you're not gonna get any other place. And then, you know, we'll have an area set up for food trucks that we can bring in that will complement the already existing restaurants that we have downtown. So we really want to make that the focal point of the Heritage District. We understand there's gonna be a lot of improvements going downtown and uh, South Irving, 
And so we want to be there first so as we continue to grow, everything will grow around us and just tie into what we've done in the park. It looks amazing so far. We were looking at some of the construction as you were talking about and what's been going on there at Heritage Park. And Amy, I want to come to you about that because the amphitheater, the amphitheater alone mm -hmm. is going to be amazing for families, right? It's going to be amazing. Not only is it going to be provide a stage uh, for events and for the community, but also behind the stage is going to be a large LED screen. So we can easily do pop up movie nights out there for the families to come and enjoy. Uh, we'll be able to provide entertainment at all size and ranges just due to the size of the stage. We will have built in sound and lighting, which is a great feature um, because we'll be able to move in large acts quickly and make changes overs for larger events. So just excited about the opportunity and the different events uh, that we'll have in that park. Uh, one of the largest and I'm looking the most forward to is the Christmas, the holiday event. Uh, that will be our uh, vocal point of the Christmas uh, decorations and stuff along with Centennial, what they're looking at building and uh, growing on Main Street. So I think that that's gonna be the center of what we'll have going down for the holidays. So looking forward to that, we'll have a large Christmas tree down there and with some activities and stuff. So just probably the most exciting part of that will, the completion of the project will be around October. Hmm. So just in time for Christmas 2021. Perfect timing. Y'all really do have a lot going on. That sounds like a lot of fun. And now I want to switch a little bit and talk about Georgia Farrow and yeah. come to you, Joe, because like I said, y'all really have been busy. And I know you've added a, a second gym. You're working on that. How's the progress growing? It is. Um, we were able to work with um, a housing human services department here with the city and utilize some grant funding to add a second gym to that location. We wanted to not only add another gym, because uh, there's a lot of facilities that have two basketball gyms. This gym is going to be half basketball and then half indoor turf, which is going to open it up for a variety of different indoor programming. Uh, we've also did an upgrade to the playground out there. So this is a much needed upgrade you know, for that rec center. It's one of the older rec centers that we had in our inventory. And so it was due for some renovations. And this way, now we'll have it updated, state-of-the-art stuff in there brand new weight room equipment out there. We'll also have the addition of um, locker rooms and showers out there. So we're really excited about that. Yeah, a lot of people excited about getting back into gyms. Yes. Those who have stayed away during the pandemic, they're like, wow, not only are we gonna have one, we have two. That gives more space for them to work out and it makes them feel a little safer, I'm sure. So that's yes. definitely good news. I also wanna talk about the new additions at Center Park Recreation Center because I know you've gone through phase three. Tell us what that included. Same thing um, with Center Park. We were able to utilize those um, some grant funding, and then we did an upgrade out at Center Park with the weight room prior to this and, and brought it up to date. Again, one of our older facilities, and we wanted to bring it up to date and do some renovations out there. Now we're on our final phase, which is the back part of Center Park where the restrooms are on the lower floor, where the locker rooms are. We're going to do some updating down there, brighten it up, and just bring it up to date and tie it into what the renovations that we've done to the rest of the facility. Okay, a lot of work going on. And, and Amy, I mentioned a little bit about uh, everything going on with COVID-19 and the recreation centers have had to think outside of the box because of it with social distancing really being important over the past year. As an example, you created the new event, Erie Irving. That was a huge success. And as we move into 2021, what kind of programs are you considering? We are currently um, continuing the stay safe. So we're looking at ways that we can still keep in touch with the community, re get them involved in what we're doing. Good. So keeping them engaged in what we have going on, what we have to offer, trails, parks, uh, utilizing the recreation centers that oftentimes have trails around the rec centers. Mm -hmm. So for the holiday, we did a holiday hunt, uh, Elves on the Trail, Look forward to many more events like that until we're, we're able to gather uh, more. Um, so we'll continue to do what we're doing, um, offering community things to do, get outdoors, um, just being there for the community to get them out and keep them together as a family. Wonderful. For those th who still have a bit of concern, what kind of safety measures have you put into place? For the rec centers, uh, we have definitely uh, been limiting the number of people that have been allowed to go into the rec centers. We've also kept the uh, fitness level or fitness room uh, to a 50% capacity. 
they will have, they'll continue to have to make reservations for our time blocks and we're cleaning, we're, we have different time slots through the day that we do deep cleaning to make sure. As they walk in, we do temperature checks and, and we make them sign a waiver, just making sure that they know that they're coming in at their own risk, but we're doing all we can to keep the facilities clean. Uh, temperature checks when they come in and just making sure that we have a control limited of people in each rec center. I love that and I'm sure others watching too feel the same way because it makes you feel a little bit safer mm -hmm. when you have to get out and we all need to keep moving, right? right That's an right. important thing to do. <laughs> Speaking of all of us, not just adults, we gotta talk about the kids and I know a lot of children are really looking forward to what you're doing at West Park Playground. Can you tell us? Yeah, that playground is just gonna be fantastic. Um, you know, I, I went by there and looked at it the other day in, in our parks crew, uh, when they worked on that, working with our CIP team to, to figure out what kind of play features they wanted to put out there, they really knocked it out the park. Uh, it's, it's got the shade structures out there, something that we've never had in the playgrounds over at the West Park before. And one of the neat things is the, the, the turf out there. We're gonna have actual artificial turf out there instead of the wood chips or the pour in place, the the rubber surfacing out there. Right. So it, it's a little bit different looking, but it would be great out there. Um, it's a new thing that you're starting to see in the playground industry. So this will be the first park to have that. So West Park's gonna be, um, get a number of things first and, and, and things that you'll see trending throughout the city as we continue to make upgrades and improvements. It sounds like it's going to be a great improvement and definitely safer for kids these days. I mean, back in the day, we didn't have that. They're like, jump no. at your own risk. <laughs> no, now y'all yeah. are protecting us. That's a good thing, protecting our kids, right? A lot of safety standards. Um, we have a very rigorous playground safety inspection team that goes out and inspects those things to make sure that we're up to standard and that we are compliant with the state code and, uh, across the board on all of our playgrounds. So our team is really on top of that. Wonderful. And another thing that they're really on top of that I'm sure you're proud of is what they're doing with King Square Pocket Park. Yes. Tell us about that. Uh, King Square Pocket Park is going to be a park located in Bear Park. Uh, I mean, Bear Creek. There was, a, there, was a, there was a piece of property down there that couldn't be developed because it didn't tie into the sanitary sewer system. So the idea came that because it's right along the railway and it's pretty much a, an entrance into the city, from Grand Prairie down there into the Bear Creek area. Why not have something down there that signified the significance of Bear Creek, but then also honored those who were in the forefront of the civil rights movement. So we, we thought about it and kind of came up with the idea of King Square, a place that would be honoring to Dr. King, but also talk about some of the other pioneers in the civil rights movement in the, in the fight for freedom here in this country. Wonderful. And tell us the reasoning behind that. What made you want to do that? You know, I think the biggest thing was, you know, as a city, we're such a diverse city with such a diverse population. And the Bear Creek community has a very rich history. And as that community changes, we don't want to lose that history. Uh, we want to make sure that people understand that Bear Creek at one point was one of the only places that you could live in North Texas as a freeman. Um, mm -hmm. There's also a slave cemetery located in the Bear Creek community. So there's a lot of rich heritage and history down there. And so we felt that this was a great place to have that marker that would honor Dr. King and all of those that fought for civil rights. And then also remind people of how significant the Bear Creek community is to, to us as a whole. Very nice. I'm sure a lot of people are looking forward to being there. And I know a lot of folks are already using the trails. I'm talking yes. about the new Rock Island bike and pedestrian trail. What are you hearing? What kind of feedback have you gotten on that so far? You know, I, I laugh. I, I ride along Rock Island every morning. And as we were constructing that trail, it's like we get a section poured in concrete. And immediately, as soon as we opened it, people were out there walking. They would walk to the dead end and just wait for more to come. There, there was just such an anticipation for people to get out there to use it. But it's great, it, it runs along Rock Island. It goes from Irby all the way down to the train station down by Bear Creek. Um, and again, just a, a, a passageway that it goes under the bridge down there and people are utilizing it all the time. And we've seen a, a big increase in our trail usage and, and that even includes our new trails. And this is one that was just been super popular amongst our residents down there. So really happy about that project. And again, it runs right alongside of the King Square project. So it, it'll be a trail, the King Square project can also be looked at as a trailhead. So people walking that trail will be able to stop there, take in that venue and then continue along the trail. How's the Delaware Creek Trail coming along? 
It's coming very good. The Delaware Creek Trail will run, uh, when it's completed, it'll go from Mountain Creek Preserve and then tie in to um, Centennial Park. So wow. basically you'll be able to go from the City Hall area, Centennial Park, go all the way to Mountain Creek Preserve and then, t and then go right into our Campion Trail System. Um, so it's, um, our trail system is just outstanding. There's a lot of connections being made. Um, a lot of people have asked about a bridge that they've seen down in, in the river bottoms where the city of Dallas is tying into our Campion Trail system as well. Mm -hmm. So we'll be one of the, we'll, not one of the, we will probably be the most connected city in the Metroplex with our trail system. You'll be able to go into several different cities from our trail system. Wonderful. Amy, why do you think these trails and the parks are such an important amenity to the city? I think there's several different reasons why um, in today's time, it's pretty much all that families are able to do in, during the pandemic. Um, you know, I truly think that it's helped us get people out to see the gyms that we have in the trails and parks. Um, you know, one of the things that we did was our first virtual event was a scavenger hunt. Mm -hmm. So we highlighted eight of the parks that maybe people might in the community might not have been able to visit. So we were trying to get people out, but I think in today's world, health is a huge thing. Um, so people are looking and moving to places that have trail systems and parks for their families and for healthy uh, purposes. But also, um, you know, like I said, I think it's important to make sure people in the community know what we have to offer. And I think that we've tried to do that through different events that we've done through social media and just highlighting uh, the growth and um, expansions that we've had. Well, a lot of expansion going on for sure. I, I wanna ask you, Joe, are there any other plans for existing or future facilities? We're looking at some things, as you know, we, we conducted a master plan a couple of years ago. Um, and so the master plan at some point calls for another facility up north uh, and a senior center. So at some point we'll start to look into that and, and then at some point hopefully a bond package or something will come up. But right now the main thing is trying to maintain what we have and, and stay on top of that because as you continue to grow, it's also important to make sure that we're maintaining what we have. We can't ignore the things that we have in our inventory, and we want to be able to do that and take care of our residents and continue to look forward. So the master plan is a good stepping stone for us. It's a good blueprint to keep us on track, and so hopefully we'll be able to keep following that and continue to grow. For sure. And speaking of plans, I want to go back a bit. You were talking about MLK. You mentioned that in the Tribute Center headed to that park facility. But I wanted to ask you about the virtual events that are planned as well. Can you tell us about those? Sure. Um, again, you know, the city has a long history of celebrating Dr. King's birthday, and we didn't want that to go aside this year, even with the pandemic. So we're going to do a virtual event for that. Really excited about that. We worked with ICTN and communications on preparing that and putting that together. Uh, it's going to be a great event, so I'm, I would encourage all of our residents to tune in and take, it out, take a look at that. And Amy also mentioned how it's really important for people to get out and do things, whether it's the virtual stuff at home or actually getting out and going into a park, just staying active yeah. and keeping their brains active. Why is the city concerned with that? Because I know it, it is a true concern and you're working so hard to make sure that people do stay active even during these different times. You know, it, it's very important that we keep engaged with our residents during these times. Uh, you know, some people are locked up in home with their families, and there are also a lot of people that are home alone. So it's important that we're doing all the outreach that we can on social media to, to entertain and engage people and encourage them to get out on our park system and, and, and walk. And I think for their physical and also mental health, it's, it's great to be able to get out and take advantage of the fresh air in the outside settings. Um, we have a great trail system for that. It's safe, it's clean. And um, we're definitely seeing the use from our residents. I think our trail, we have a trail counter. And uh, once the pandemic really set in, we went out there and we looked at the, the numbers on the trail counter. We thought it was actually broke. The numbers kind of quadrupled <laughs> in a week and, yeah. and they've been consistently going up. And we've been getting good reviews from people online. People are really taking advantage of the trails and discovering different parts of the city. So 
it's good that they're doing that and we're glad to be in a position to be able to help and provide that service for our residents. Well, we're glad that y'all are there to offer it. Amy, I, I wanna ask you, he mentioned a bit, Joe was talking about social media. How can people connect that may not know when all these events are taking place or what's going on virtually or where they can go? There are some people who've never exercised right. before in their <laughs> life who now are like, I'm bored, right. I'm going to somebody's <laughs> rec center. How do they find out where to find these locations? There's a few different ways. You can log on to our website, irvingevents.org or the city website at cityofirving.org. Um, we'll list all of our events there and all the information. If you um, have a Facebook page, make sure to go to at Irving Park, Parks and Rec. Uh, that's our um, name on Facebook. That is where we'll post all of the updated information. Uh, talking about MLK, if you go there, there'll be a live countdown where you can sign up and watch it directly on our social media page. Wonderful. And Joe, for people who've never like stepped in a gym in their life, they've never been to the rec center or been on a trail, they don't have to have anything spe special or spectacular to do. You don't have to bring your own weights. Y'all provide all that, right? We what have can all they the expect? equipment. Yes, we have all of the equipment. And for new users, we make it really, really simple. You can go on to, this, to our webpage and it will, it'll tie you right into ActiveNet where you can sign up for our rec centers and fill out the information. Uh, right now, the only people that we're allowing to utilize our facilities are Irving residents. And so we welcome them to come on in. We have staff that can help them out if they're new to working out, kind of show them the ropes. And um, there's also a lot of low impact things that they can do. And I think it'll be a fun, uh, fun experience for them. And do you all have apps that work with this equipment or how does it work? How do they connect with you? Is there a particular app? We don't have apps right now, uh -huh. but that's one of the things we'll be looking looking at doing in the future. Okay, yeah. it sounds like it's gonna be a lot of fun. And I know also they have different programs in the past that you've had yes. with COVID existing right now. Are you still able to have the different programs available or any type of classes or you work yeah. out on your own or how does it go? Right now in the workout stuff, you're working out on your own. Mm -hmm. um, we've been really restrictive on, on group gatherings, but we're gonna ease back into that. So you will see a lot of, uh, of fitness classes, group fitness classes. Uh, we'll have them spaced out, limited number of people in there. Um, and as the weather warms up, we'll take advantage of the outdoors and, and do some things outdoors to kind of get people out and get them engaged and get them back to a fit lifestyle again. Wonderful. And we talked about events a bit earlier about all these things coming up like the 4th of July and the plans for Christmas. Um, what else do you have going on that you may be looking forward to coming up in 2021? You know, we have um, we also are going to do our Taste of Irving, hopefully, you know, that'll be in June. That's going to be a fun event. Um, Amy's got some partnerships with that to really take that to the next level. So we're really excited about planning that right now and getting that going. So. And I think the biggest thing about 2021 is we're just really excited about the possibility of being able to get back together with our residents and, and get back outside and do some activities and, and have our Christmas tree lighting, our 4th of July and our Main Street type events and all of those things again. Yeah, and this is like a broad question, Amy, but uh, why is it really important? And I know the answer and some people out there go, <laughs> of course we know, but why is it important to get people of all ages moving in some kind of way? Just again, for the mental well-being of everyone, um, I think it's important for the families to get out, get active, family, friends. Um, just again, in today's world, it's, it's important to um, be uh, mentally healthy as well as physically healthy. So, you know, I think it's just important to get out and even move, just walk, get involved somehow, um, you know, I know, Keep Irving Beautiful is doing many cleanups. And so there's many ways to get active in the community. And I think it's just important for the physical and mental um, just life of everyone here in I the community. I agree, I agree. <laughs> and as you both have mentioned, there have been so many more people hitting those trails lately and really taking part of what the rec centers have to offer. How do you plan, Joe, to keep the momentum going in 2021 and 2022 and beyond? Like all these people who've never been on the trails before that are now there, you gotta keep them, keep them moving. We are, we, you know, we, you mentioned, you know, the, the two trail projects that we have going on right now. A big project in our trail system is they're working on the development for the connecting part, the center section of the Campion Trails. So once that's complete, there'll be a new addition to our trail system. People will actually be able to go from the north side of town all the way across to the south side. They'll be able to go into Carrollton Farmers Branch, Capel on the north side. They'll be able to go into Dallas, Grand Prairie, here on the south side. So we're really excited about that. So there's, you still have some growth growing on in our trail system. Programming wise, I, 
I'm fortunate enough to have a very creative staff out there. Um, they pretty much have free reign to kind of come up with some ideas and, and they get very creative. They're really outside the box with things that they come up with, ways to engage our residents. And I think by allowing them to do that, they'll always come up with a fresh idea to, to keep people excited about what we have going on. Yeah, and another question that's just kind of random, but people yeah. need to know, because maybe they've never been on the trail before, what kind of safety equipment do they need to make sure that their riding experience is okay? Helmet? Yeah, if you're on a bike, you definitely want a helmet on, on, on the trail out there. Uh, we do not allow motorized vehicles on there, so scooters or anything like that, that are, they're not allowed on our no trail razors system. No from razors Christmas? out there on the trail. <laughs> no. Um, and, and one of the things, I mean, and we do have quite a few bikers that use our trail system, and, and we have also a lot of runners out there, so that could be a bad mix sometimes. So we really, we really express to people to exercise courtesy when you're out there on the trail, share the trail. Um, especially now during these times because the trails are very, very heavily crowded and used by a lot of people. But the main thing is helmets if you're on a bike out there and then our runners just, you know, you're running, running shoes and things like that. Make sure people warm up, especially people who normally don't run or exercise like that. Mm -hmm. You don't want to just go out there and jump on the trail and try to run a mile and pull something. So we want to, you know, proper warm up and cool down when you go out there and utilize our trail system and just be aware of the bikers and the skaters. And it's a nice way of saying leave the high heels and flip flops at home and put on yes. some tennis <laughs> shoes, right? Yes. Okay, we're about to wrap up. But before we do, is there anything else you'd like to add to the updates about parks and recreation or any future projects you have coming? Um, our main thing is, you know, we're really looking forward to being able to open up and, and bring our residents back into our facilities. So um, I would just advise people to, to keep aware of what's on the website, to keep up to what we're doing. If there's any announcements or any uh, restrictions being lowered, that would be the first place that that would be posted and um, just ready to get back to business as normal. Good deal. And what would you like to add to that, Amy? Just, I just echo what he says. Yeah. <laughs> just keep moving, keep just everybody keep active. Right. Wonderful. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being here, both of you, and congratulations on all the upgrades and improvements and openings you have going on right now with Irving Parks and Recreation. Thank you. You're very welcome. And thank you so much for being here, and thanks for watching. I'm Starlene Stringer. Please be sure to tune in Thursday, February 11th, for the next edition of Open Line. We'll see you then.